language kind of offends you, I'm going to fucking apologize in advance. All right, so let's start by talking about numbers. Pre-tax U.S. dollars. This DF-83 from EspressoOutlet.net is $650 right now on sale. That's where this one came from. Got this written down here, so I got to kind of look at it so I don't remember all this stuff, okay? The DF-64 I had, um, that was like $450 shipped back in like 2021. The niche costs about the same here as this grinder right now, but I guess it all depends on the fucking currency exchange rate and shipping. Back when I bought mine last year, it was $750. I also had a Eureka Atom 75 last year, and that was about $1,400. And for informational purposes, I think we can mention like, just for informational purposes, they don't really compare. It's like trying to compare a Ferrari to a BMW, okay? Let's just throw that out there because there are single dose espresso grinders of similar burr sizes. Let's start with the Legome or Legom or however the fuck you say it. I'm not a pronunciation expert. Fucking word police me. I don't give a fuck. For informational purposes, a Legome P100 is $2,650, okay? Basically four times the cost of this grinder. And then a Legome P64 is $1,600. That's basically a little, little less than double the cost of this grinder, okay? So, in my opinion, this one is actually closer related to Legome P100 because 100 millimeters minus 83 millimeters is 17 millimeters. That means the burst size is close to it than the 64 millimeter. There's a 19 millimeter difference there. So this probably competes more with the Legome P64 in terms of burst size. Let's not even go into like Weber workshops or Lynn Weber or whatever the fuck they're calling themselves today. Um, Titus and Cafetech, they are so far out of the league. Those are like Bugatti prices compared to BMW prices, okay? Let me start by giving y'all a little backstory and some tidbits I feel are relevant to those looking to buy or upgrade an espresso grinder or their espresso grinder. Yeah, I said upgrade. Here's my fucking sermon and justification on why I said upgrade. When I upgraded last year from my Gaja Classic and Rancilio, Rancilio Rocky that I converted to single dosing, by the way, um, my wife was like, we really don't need that right now. What do we need a $1,200 coffee machine for? So I quickly corrected her and said, it's an espresso machine, not a coffee machine. Kind of like Bruce Willis fucking says, it's a chopper, not a motorcycle, or it's a motorcycle, not a chopper, baby. In Pulp Fiction, kind of along those lines, right? So I also told her, I want to get a new grinder too. She's like, well, I thought you just got a new grinder. I had just gotten a new DF64 a couple months ago, still running with my Gaja Classic, but I figured I wanted me a Eureka Atom. Everyone was saying how much the Atom just kicked so much ass. So, all right. So she's like, how much are they? So I said, well, the coffee machine, or the espresso machine is 1200 and the grinder is 1400 She's like, what? If we have that kind of money for coffee machines, I'd rather just give it to my parents. Okay, so uh, old Uncle X here really had to get creative at that point with my reasoning to finally get her to say okay. It took about three weeks of working her, explaining all the fucking benefits I'd reap by having it and how it's gonna last for like 10 years and we'll have to buy another one and buy one, cry one and all that bullshit, you know the drill. And I'm sure y'all deal with that. Do not tell me I'm the only motherfucker here who has a wife or significant other that says shit like, we really don't need it. Or my favorite one, we really don't need it right now. We really don't need it right now. What the fuck is right now? Well, I always say well, to myself, I don't say it to her, I, you don't need it, but I fucking need it, and I fucking need it right now. And also the whole right now thing, it just fucking kills me again because it's not like we're cash strapped or waiting for old Aunt Darla Ray to die and leave us this windfall. fall. What the fuck is the difference between today or next month or next week or six months from now? My economy of scale or scale of economy in my house isn't gonna be offset by fucking a coffee grinder or a coffee machine as long as it's reasonably 
you know, we're not going to go crazy on that shit here. We're going to get exactly what we need to do, exactly what we want to do, and that's produce kick-ass espresso every fucking time. Well, I've kind of found that Jathas don't get it. Bless their little hearts. And it's worth mentioning this also applies to you ladies out there who have like a, a husband or significant other that's always fucking spitting that shit at you. We don't need that or whatever, trying to control you. Fuck that. If you need something or want something bad enough, you'll figure out a way to work them to get it. So that kind of brings us back to the subject of this like scarface length production of a coffee grinder discussion or movie, I guess you would say at this point. Remember, we were talking about single dose espresso grinders. Do you really have to spend $650? I'm going to say yes, you fucking do. For what you get in the DF-83, yes, you fucking do. But no more than $650. Well, while it's on sale at least. Let's run through a list of the features here before I get into like going into this thing and, and like messing with it and touching it and taking it apart. Not to the level like Barrett takes it apart, but to a level you'll understand it pretty well. We're going to look inside. Let's just look at it real quick. So let me go through some things here that make it, to me, that make it what it is. 83 millimeter flat burrs. Any espresso grinder designed to be a single doser with burr size even close to that is going to cost you at least double. Okay, there are burr upgrades available, but not knowing any better, I'm just going to say that the stock one suits me just fine. Espresso leans kind of, my espresso taste leans a little bit towards a traditional, you know, brew ratio, one to two. Sometimes I do a little modified to get like maybe 30 seconds of um, a time and maybe like 40 out. Sometimes I do a turbo like 27 seconds of time and like 40 out. Along those lines, but you've got to remember, taste is very subjective, but I find it to be very similar to that of my Adam 75, okay? You also got to remember, for me, in my case, every shot, every double that I pull, I always pull doubles, 18 grams, 18.5, 19, something in that range, it's going into about 8 ounces of hot milk, so your results may vary. So let's remember, this grinder was designed for single dosing. It's got a very consolidated bird chamber. Machining is very tight, so anything that the sweepers themselves don't evacuate, this little bellows does, okay? Um, I am expecting when we get into there, there will be some grinds in the clump breaker, um, but we'll see when we take it apart. I don't know. Um, it's going to be nice no more opening and dropping that niche lid. What a pain in the ass how loud that was, you know? Basically, you have to do it. Like after you're grinding to try and get out the last hole, it's like, dum, ch, dum, ch, dum. and the funny thing about it is you can do that and you think you get everything out the next time you go to use it. If you want to do that first or you bump the grinder, grinds are going to fall out. I never did understand that, but what a shitty feeling, okay? This grinder is very fast and consistent. I'm consistently getting out within 0.1 to 0.2 grams of what I'm putting in. It yields very fluffy and consistent grinds. Zero clumps, and I mean zero clumping whatsoever. Much better than, than the niche could ever produce on its best day and after like a year of seasoning. Still, it clumped. You needed WDT. There's no WDT needed with that, okay? So um, it's about equal to that I was getting out of Adam 75 in terms of grind consistency. Although I didn't have the Adam 75, um, very long. It didn't, I like a more medium, a medium roast, but towards a darker side. They use like Joe Suma Malabar Gold um, uh, espresso beans. And they're a little darker side of medium, a little tiny bit of oil on not much at all. So once I grind, I grind directly into this freaking portafilter and that funnel right there and hold it up to deal like this. Then I just knock it down with this little WD2 tool. To, I knock the mound down. Just, that's it. No, no WT needed. And I know I've heard people say, oh, you can just stick these needles into a cork. Well, I could sharpen some fucking chopsticks and tape them all together and make a fork if I wanted to, too. But I don't. So it comes with this little thing, too, that fits in your pour filter basket. Look at the difference. See, this one fits around the outside. This one fits down in there. I have ground with it with this fork on there too. 
I took it off though for my grinding pleasure because I didn't like that this thing leaves kind of like an indentation in your puck that you gotta the distribution of it afterwards is a little more a little more fun than if you just grind into like this and hold it. It doesn't take long at all to grind. We'll go through some grinds later too. Okay. Um, I don't like grinding into dose and cups. Although I will say that if I did, I like the plastic one better. I get, plastic gets a lot of knocks. Plastic dose and cup, oh, it's not premium, blah, 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 blah. I like plastic so you can see what's going on. And if you were to turn it upside down and shake it, you'd actually could maybe see what was going on. There is no RDT needed in my environment. You know, that is it. Spraying your beans with water before you grind them. Fuck that. I get like no static whatsoever. Then again, it is 50% humidity in my house, basically year round. But outside, it's like a fucking rainforest. I live in like Southeast Florida. No RDT. This grinder is extremely overbuilt. It basically feels like a fucking anvil, okay? On your countertop. Um, let's do a little comparison of weight. This thing weighs 23 pounds. It's basically all engine casing, burrs. It's just solid aluminum too, okay? It's painted solid aluminum. Painted, whatever you want to call it, finish. I'm going to say it's like a baked on, like a whatever, Kynar style finish. Um, the Eureka Atom weighs 21 pounds. This is two pounds heavier than an Atom. And then Atom has like a hopper and electronics and shit too. This has none of that. This is just again like a fucking casing, a motor, and some burrs. 23 pounds versus Eureka Atom with this little panel on the front, all little buttons and shit, and a fucking hopper. Mm -mm. Now, let's talk about the niche. That weighs nine pounds. Oh, it's fucking so cute. So this is an extremely overbuilt machine. Another thing is you get zero drift in the grind setting. I mean, you have to physically want to move this fucker to move it, to change the grind setting, okay? And that has a lot to do with the wave spring that's in here. We'll go into that a little bit later too. It's simple, there's no electronic bullshit on it. You just push the button and let it get after it. Okay, and it does what it does. And then ultimately we'll turn off, but I think that might have it on for like 10, 12 seconds tops. That's with all the bellows thing. I'm going to run a little bit bellows. It's, it's all good. So it's clean, no business. It's a clean, no gimmicks, all business aesthetic. Looks as good or better, in my opinion, than anything in this price range. Not a fan of the fucking wood, though. Not a big fan of wood. Um, I don't know who the fuck ever came up with the idea of putting wood around like water and shit and coffee but I don't know it's just not my deal um, it doesn't blend with anything in my kitchen or most modern kitchens that I could think about I always kind of scratch my head on the whole wood and espresso machine deal but hey you do you all right so let's open her up like I said had this thing just about two weeks. The only time I opened it was when I first got it, just to kind of have a look at it all, unscrew it, see what was going on inside it. As far as I got was just taking off the top bar, put an F on it to mark the front, and that was about it. Um, so let's get into it. Obviously this little wooden piece comes off. For me, I find it easier to leave that in place and just when I go to and put beans in, I just take the top off, put them in, and put them back. So here it is after about two weeks of using about twice a day, sometimes more. Check this out. Look at the burr chamber, how just that burr spinning is perfect. There's no wobble in it, nothing. My DF64 wasn't quite like that. It had a little, little wobble in it. Obviously, the niche, take a look inside your niche and look what's going on in there. So, we're gonna unplug that, right? We're gonna just um, go ahead and unplug it for safety purposes. And I'm going to go into another biggie that's in here. So you got to take this off. And you're going to have to refine your zero point. But I'll show you how easy that is to do all that stuff on this grinder. So we're going to take this little, looks like a, maybe an aluminum, some kind of metal ring off. And then this, we're just going to unscrew this collar. Something to mention is if you have a DF64, we've seen any videos on there, a pain in the ass to get back on. I'll tell you that right now. This one is not at all. You'll see that. I'm anxious to see what's in the um, chute, personally. So 
here's the collar, a very tight tolerance is on that right there. I mean, that's, that's a nice fit inside the collar, the collar itself. That's that. So the burr, the upper burr sits here. It's got these two little rubber sort of um, shims, I guess you would say, holding it in place. So when you remove it, those shims are going to want to come off. You're going to want to kind of keep track of them, right? And remember to put them back in. Again, when I got mine, I marked the front as the front of the grinder. So here's the grinder after two weeks of grinding. This is, these are the beans. Now it says August 29th, but I buy it by 10 pounds in a box in these individual bags. I put them in the freezer to use this little piece of tape to tape over this um, degassing hole. So I put them in the day I get them so they don't really start off gassing, degassing until I um, just put this earlier today in the cabinet, probably be opening it tomorrow. This is the stuff. I love it. Here's what it looks like. So you can see any oil content or whatever. So there's the inside of the grinder again, there's the burr. No need to do anything. I'm not gonna do anything with that whatsoever. I'm just gonna put it right back on there. What I wanna do is get to this chute. Now I watched Mr. Barrett else take it apart so I knew how to do it. It's basically these two screws right here come out. And I watched Barrett do something that I'm not gonna do. That's when it comes time to remove that chute and the two screws there for the clump buster. That's what I really want to see how much clumps the clump buster's holding. I'm going to put something over that little hole there, like some painter's tape or something like that. Don't give me no shit screw. I don't have a tolerance for putting up with shit. Let's try a bigger fucking driver here. Show the set comes with a bigger one. Let's see if maybe it's. There we go. Nothing firing than watching someone's hands work on shit, is there? Not. So he just kind of went like this, and this thing came right off. I learned a lot from watching other people's videos. So I'm gonna learn not to fucking lose. Damn. Okay, so that's that little piece of um, dealio there. That's just a cover for the actual shoot. So two weeks of use. Some normal beans. Not not oily and definitely not a light roast either. And there's what's in the shoot. Shoot. Okay. Here's something huge in this grinder is the fucking wave spring. Remember in the DF64 it had like those three springs, like the peace sign or whatever? This has this wave spring. I don't, I don't want to mess it up, the alignment of it, but it, it, it's a burly piece of um, like metal here, okay? And that's what holds up your deal. It's an engineered piece of metal that's perfectly support that. And it is very rigid. When it's in here and the forces are applied equally to it, it it's very does its job well. Okay, I'm gonna take it out of there just just because. You've seen that I've unplugged this, so I'm just gonna let this drape over the side now. There's no need to be up there. I just wanted to show y'all that we're gonna be safe. So I want to take off the chute. Like I said I watched Barrett's shit drop inside here. So that ain't gonna fucking happen to me. I hope could, but um. Do it except to go like so. Okay, so let's try taking these out. Put them back in, looks like it's going to be fun. I'll do that on my own time though, like Mr. Hand. Or maybe not even take them all the way out. Maybe just loosen them enough where I can slide off this chute. There we go. Okay. So there's my clump crusher. Looks like it's got a nice little build up on it, right? So what I'm going to do is this. Any of y'all using like your fucking household Dyson or something to vacuum out your coffee gear? Mm. Huge mistake. 
I was doing it for a little while until your whole house smells like coffee. Your wife doesn't notice it, but you notice it. And you're like, fuck it. It doesn't smell like good coffee. It smells like stale coffee. So I'm going to kind of probably shouldn't vacuum this because I'm just thinking of that. Let's suck up the, suck up the clump crusher. Let me remove them. So the one that looks like a little flap here appears to be the outside. The outside piece. So that's it right there. Just a little flat. Not bad. This is performing really well. It's, they call it a clump crusher. So I'm just going to hold this down and vacuum this stuff off here. Okay, so this guy goes on like that. here so I can put them back on like that and give it a little vacuum behind me too. I'll have it out and get the mod as well. So this is a dedicated espresso grinder vacuum. It doesn't vacuum up any spills or anything in the house. It's made just for this task right here. So while I have it out, I might as well hit this stuff right here with it. There, literally, there is such a little bit of coffee inside of the chamber behind the birds there. But that's us saying how efficient this chamber is and how tight um, the sweepers ride along the sides. So let's turn it back on now and watch again what I was talking about. Now we're going to keep our fingers out of there. We're not going to be dumbasses or anything, right? I'm going to get this paper towel out from under it too. This little piece back here. This thing, like I said, it's like an anvil. It just cuts paper towels. There's something still under it. One of these little rubber things. Okay. There you go. It's looking pretty good. Okay. So now we'll reassemble it. I'm going to unplug it again, turn it back over. I may clip this out of the video because I'll probably look like a dumbass in it. Got to put this guy on first. Surprised at how very little there was in there and how well the clump crusher does its job in doing exactly what it says it does. Crush clumps. No clumps. It's a static free operation we got here. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for the freaking, oh it's right here. Shoot. See if I can get my vacuum on it real quick. It's a little bit of coffee in there, not much. Just a couple screws there, I don't want to vacuum out. There's so little coffee in there, it's not even, it's not even worth our time to really do much. I will hit this bottom part again real quick, but this isn't very effective in removing it. Not much to remove again. That did it. That did a really good job right there. Okay. Now it's basically clean. Let's go ahead and see how well this works out. Stand it up. Again, 
I keep hitting those little deals there. There you go, back in business. So now we're gonna put these little, um, just wipe them off. They seem to have a little tiny bit of cafe on them. But we will remove and reinsert. And we gotta put those two screws back in that hold the teeth clumping device, I guess. That must be their only purpose in life. I'm not gonna guess, but I'm guessing that must be what they do. They must hold that in place. Okay. They hold the decomping device in place. They hold the cover of the chute in place, is what they do. That was it. A little bit of time, you have access to the chute much easier than a Eureka Atom 75. It's time to reinsert the wave spring, and I kind of laid it down sort of the same way it came out. I don't know if it makes any difference whatsoever, but there it is. Okay, so these guys are in. Upper burr going in. My F that I marked previously for front, if you can see that on there, is um, going in the front. Al frente. For mis amigos hablando español. Al frente. Okay, so there's that. Make sure that's there. And now this guy, when I first did it, it screwed right on. Very much unlike the DF-64, even the freaking niche could be a pain in the ass. Niche is a lot easier than a DF-64 to find it. So here we're going to find zero on this thing, right? It's got a little ways to go. Like I said, that wave spring is pretty tight. It's got a ways to go yet because here, it's my little socket that I'm used to turn this. It's definitely not there yet. I think it has to come around to espresso again. At least that one more time. Let's say zero is maybe there. Not quite yet. Nope, it's gonna go around again. Nope, not quite all the way. To me, just first chirp. At zero. Just touching. Put this puppy on. Throw him down. On zero. That's, there's another little quirky pet peeve I have about the machine. And that is that you see this little indicator, this little circle right here? Turn it towards you. When I put it on 15, I look at what line it's on. Just a little thing. See, it's on that line right there. So I put it over to 20. I count from this 15. 1, 2, 3, 4. It's not quite at 20, is it? Look, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. It's not quite there. So it'd have to be like over here. It's like 20, right? And not end of the world, because it doesn't really make that big of a freaking difference. But I just thought I'd point it out to you. That's about all I could really find wrong with it. Okay, so back from the hand washing. Turn it around this way towards, towards me. So one of the things that I've heard, one of the things I'm gonna show you about this that I really like is, I wanna plug it in for it too. As we get towards zero, we need to be towards zero to understand it. So the machine's on, I'm gonna come back down towards my zero point slowly. Slowly.
right there, right? Look at this. Bursts are not touching with the wave spring. There's no possibility. It's nice and strong. So you can not have to worry about your burrs moving. The wave spring has the strength to keep your um keep that burr up there. So yeah, you gotta love that. I love that. That's a, that's one of the things that made me fall in love with the grinder. The build on this thing is stout as fuck. So one thing I guess we'll point out, we'll talk about. So yeah, the cord. I've heard, oh, the cord comes out the left side. Yeah, it does come out the left side. The only way I can really see that being a major issue, I mean, you've seen it on my coffee station over there. The only real big problem with that is if like you're into like glamour shots with your grinder, right? I don't see any other flaws or effects of it. If you're into glamour shots with your grinder, like for TikTok stuff, I get it. I, I make my own little glamour shots with my grinder. And I do see the cord sticking out. It does sort of suck it for that regard, but other than that, it doesn't affect the functionality or anything else of it. I mean, think of the cord on a vacuum cleaner, walk around with that thing. I mean, if you can't, if you can manage a vacuum cleaner cord, I think that this will be all right. Okay, also heard complaints that the grinder can rotate slightly when you first press the switch to activate the grinder. I'm talking about the switch on the side. Remember, this is a 550 watt motor with 83 millimeter burst. So if I just go to hit it like it's going to bite me, it can move. But I'm going to anticipate it when I turn it on. Remember, first thing I'm recommending is this is not the cleanest countertop right here. I'm saying it's dirty, but it hasn't been wiped down with alcohol and like purified like I did over there when I set it down to make sure it was completely clean. If you anticipate that it's going to move when you go and hit the button, it barely moves, right? If you push it like you're going to mean to, see that? Push it like you mean to push it. It still moves a little bit, but this is a fucking hell of a grinder. You know how Eureka Adam solved the problem, or tried to solve the problem and retard the rotation? They put two huge suction cups on the bottom of your grinder. How much of a pain in the ass that was to try and have like a WWE wrestling match to fucking get your grinder and move it off the counter? Fuck that, I'll take this tiny little bit of movement every day of the week. So why don't we grind a couple doses so we can see some output consistency, yeah? This is, no, a normal grind setting might be off. I'll use it to dial it back in. Well, I'm not gonna be pulling any shots right now, but I'm right about, usually right about 16 or so. It's been working perfectly for me. So, do it about 18.5 grams. I don't think that matters. These are unfortunately going to get thrown away anyway because I'm not ready to make coffee just at the moment. And my fucking pour filter. and a little bit would get stuck up in there since um, I did just kind of clean it, but normally I'm within 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 every time, all right? Okay, let's go for round two. Eighteen point four in.
22 right now. I'm sure that'll get better as I keep running it. Um, get all those little orifices filled back in and we're all good. At this point, basically, um, I'll summarize, okay? There's not much more I can add here. In my opinion, making espresso is like 50% you and 50% your gear. A seasoned barista, I'm sure, could slide up on a setup like this and my freaking quick mill Corolla Evo and produce freaking phenomenal results. In contrast, a novice, kind of a fucking like Slayer and like a Monolith Max, and they'd be lucky if they could produce anything other than like a steaming cup of hot piss water. In summary, my opinion, anything else that does what the DF83 does is double the price at a minimum. And the theory of diminishing returns tells me they aren't twice as good at providing exceptional grinds, nor will they improve your workflow 200%. So my opinion is, unless you're like a fucking espresso scientist and demand only the most extreme level of quality, the gains will be incremental to 90% of everyday espresso drinkers. Now take like when Motor Trend or Car and Driver do their car of the year, they pit vehicles in similar class and price points against each other. Doing that with the single dose espresso grinders puts the DF83 and the Niche Zero basically head to head. I'm not even gonna fucking throw in like a Seattle E5 SD or a Rico Oro SD. Cause I hear they pretty much suck. That's what I read on the internet. No one's really too thrilled with them. So why throw in something that people fucking don't like? I'm also not gonna throw in Ferraris and Aston Martins like Legome P100 and Weber EG1 type grinders because the price points are more than triple that of the DF83. But I'd wager they'd only be behind it by a couple of tenths in terms of performance. So the poor niche is just overhyped and way out of its fucking league when squaring off against something like this. Based on performance, features, and value for your dollar alone, DF83 is the single dose grinder of the year by a pretty wide fucking margin in my opinion. Oh, I probably should mention that it came with a hopper and a brush in the box. Now, worst part for me is I have to hit up old Joe at Espresso Outlet, who was kind enough to send me this grinder when I requested it to review. I need to thank him profusely and tell him this fucker is staying here. Someone be buying it. Now I just gotta let my wife know. Hey Siri, turn off Lucille. Okay, the Lucille is off.